And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to... <laughs> God damn it, I fucked it up already. We are back in the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. Hey, at least I don't fuck up my own name. And with me, as always, is my good is my good brother is my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadara Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. We are I'm about to bane your existence some more and tell you that, that you're roboting hard. Yeah, I'm in the it. It's sto it's raining right now. Oof. So, not a whole lot I can do about it when the when when Mother Nature wants to fuck me. You know that sounds like a one way fucking to me. Never the most enjoyable part. Yeah, but it's the price I pay for being it for being in a state where Mother Nature is on drugs. He's been hanging out with Hunter S. Thompson again. Mm hmm That and Discord has been very temperamental for me of late. Because there's been a few times where I, where I um disappear for a second. Mm hmm That's happening nearly constantly right now. Mm hmm But And the weird thing the weird thing is right now it's not it's it's not like my it's not like my ping is um is do, is doing that is doing that terrible nor is my, nor is my um outbound packet loss Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. It's just random. Mm -hmm. But it is fr it is Friday it is Friday night. You know what that means. Because we are back once again with our further journey into Vale of the Void. So we've co we've already covered classes which have been which have been absolute bangers all throughout. Inc we've mm -hmm. we have covered we've covered skills and spe and specialties. I almost called them feats. Just out of habit. Expertise. Yeah, expertise. We have covered the we have covered the mystic spell tree that is mostly full of cantrips, and all the all the other spell types we've covered we covered when we did classes. Mm-hmm. Which makes this I I um I'm probably going I'm probably going to do a total page count and pages of spells ratio. And put and put it up on Twitter or put it up in um, the server a bit later. I get the feeling it's going to be on the low end, all things considered. Mm hmm. Definitely. Like I'd I'd say prob probably around the same size as Shadowrun's um pa um page to spell ratio. I can see that. But for this one, we're doing equipment. Weapons, armor, all that good, all that good stuff. And normally, this is something I gloss over in my structured reviews, largely because the, there's not enough, there's not enough, you, there's um, not a good spot to do it in. And also, there's the fact that it would get a bit, it would get a bit repetitive, or worse, I'd end up regressing to that chapter by chapter long boy style of approach that I ha that I had. In my early days, yeah. Which I'm not. I'm not a big fan of. I've Understandable. Had, I vastly prefer the tighter structure that I have that I've had with my reviews over the last few years. But once, it, but the th the thing about the thing about doing equipment is. There, there is going to be a lot of repetitiveness, especially when we get to weapons and armor, which is actually one of the things I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. But an issue that I've sometimes had with how equipment works it, 
in a lot of RPGs, if I'm being honest, is it not mattering as much. Whereas we can see just from the kits on the classes alone that your equipment is as important as everything else you get from the class. Mm -hmm. Well, cons consider ha consider um a s consider the consider the weapons and armor in the world's most ubiquitous role playing game. <laughs> um, how much do, how how much of a difference does it make in your tactics? If a fighter is if a fighter is wielding a sword, an a an axe, a po a pole arm, etc. Other than pole arms, uh, not a whole lot. Slashing, piercing, bludgeoning doesn't have as big an effect as it as it probably should. Um, and when it does, uh, that's usually small potatoes. Um, in most cases, a long sword, an axe, a hand axe, and a and so on will all have the same damage die and the same threat range and the same accurate accuracy maybe they'll have a special tag that says finesse so you can use your dex instead of your strength well um, the, other, the only the only thing the only difference that ends up mattering is numbers go up and while some of them have tags those tags don't have as much of an influence as i'd like like I'll I said, do... the pole arm's only the only one that I can think of that has a real influence because the reach tag means they can attack something ten feet away from them instead of something right next to them. And there's it does a reason your tactics in the middle. There's a reason why one of the more one of the more popular builds has has been the um has has been not so, not exactly sword and board, but stick and board. <laughs> mm -hmm. Spear and shield, mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, I think I think I mentioned it when we were when we were doing the um, fourth edition ranking video. Mm -hmm. You did, and it was a popular build in in Pathfinder as well. But of course, there's also there's also the issue of in of it only of it only mattering at low levels. A lot of the tags. Don't really matter at high levels. That you yeah, that you see, and of course, that like we it... said before, num go, number go up. Mm -hmm. Sorry, at high level off. the equip. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's no problem. At high levels the equipment tags in the most ubiquitous role playing game. Um, which, as an aside, that was one of the reasons why I was against the idea of using that game as a basis for a Dark Souls RPG, because something like Dark Souls or even something like Diablo, your equipment is is going to be your biggest bread and butter. It's integral. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely integral. But uh The sole reason you skip the sole reason you put you improve your core stats is to get better equipment. Or if you're cheesing with a sorcery build, get better spells. <laughs> Well, that but, uh, too, well, that too, but that's just, but that's an, that's another side of the same coin. Yeah, it's also another issue entirely. Mm -hmm. Um, the at the higher levels, your features, your class features, are doing they're doing all the heavy lifting, all of it. Your your equipment is just the way that that class feature does its heavy lifting. You, you could be hitting something with a a literal one d four stick compared to a one d twelve. Claymore mm -hmm. under your class feature would still act the same. Yeah, oddly enough, um, fourth edition attempted attempted to at least have at least have the idea of certain of certain um, powers for the fighter doing different effects if you were wielding certain equipment. Um, it they didn't they didn't go all the they didn't go as all the way with it as I would have liked, but it was at least an idea to step into. Um, so the idea that was later perfected in Heavens and Heresies. Yeah, and so, and some might say, well, what, well, what, well, can you say can you say that what you guys are doing is any better? Honestly, yes. Even if we don't have a weapon list for the FF Legend project, um, 
whether you're whether you're picking a whether you're picking a light, medium, or heavy melee weapon is going to make a lot of difference on both how how constant your damage is and on how extra effort works for you and a bunch of other different things. Mm -hmm. Yes, the system we've created for the for the tag based uh, equipment creation that was uh, enhanced from Legends base version. Uh, absolutely all your equipment is going to matter. Uh, choosing whether you're wearing normal armor or arcane armor is going to determine whether your magic defense or physical defense is the better defense to use in a situation. Mm -hmm. th th there is an intrinsic reason to build your armor and weapons in a specific fashion. And, uh, well, that's going to affect how everything else works, especially in tandem with your job. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you dis especially if you decided to be a f to be a fighter, a fighter decked out in magic weapons, where you're gonna have even more crazy shit. Mm -hmm. oh, but, but enough about our game, monk. Yeah. <laughs> so, going into going into equipment, it says this chapter contains all starter item descriptions, cost, and effects. It also explains some upgrades. That can be bought with solar credits. Solar credit, which means I've been fucking up because for the longest time I was calling them system credits. I don't know why I was thinking that. And in my head, I was calling them standard credits. Mm -hmm. So it's our okay. Bad. We all fuck up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> solar credits, SC, or simply credits, are the universal monetary system, both virtual and tangible measurements of currency. Virtual credits are stored in an account with a credit chip as the tangible representation. Most transactions consist of virtual trading between accounts using these credit chips. There is no fraction of SC. Credits are used for major of for major events or cluster buying of items. For instance, if a player wants to buy a single drink from a tavern, that player would not pay credits for it is already considered paid for. However, if that same player wants to buy five barrels of fire rum, they would have to pay 5,000 credits. This is a small thing, but I like this distinction. Same. It means uh, sundry items have no cost, essentially. And small, tiny things. How many times, especially, especially with old school ga games, and especially with OSR shit, have we seen this idea of, tr of tracking every single fucking item no matter how small even to the point of of having to track fucking undergarments in some cases fuck you and your weight limits mhm mm see I, with with uh with the just no no fuck you i don't want to remember that stop and I know, I know some. I know some people are like, but you've got you've got to track all those things when you're going into dungeon because because it's like backpacking. Yeah, except here's the thing: I'm not fucking backpacking. Not to mention, in most cases, you shouldn't be staying in a dungeon for more than like two days, unless you got trapped there somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I do have to ask one question. Since the currency is virtual, does that mean that the credit chips are the blockchain? Fuck off. <laughs> no, knowing our, no, knowing our luck, their C, knowing our luck, their C bills and are, ma are maintained by by sp by space AT and T, who totally aren't techno wizards. No, monk, I've got it. I know what the credit chips are. Apes. To totally not referencing the fact that the board that the uh, board apes yacht club got hacked and all their NFTs got stolen or anything. Nope, not at all. No simpy. <laughs> I never said to have simpy. I'm just you know laughing at their misfortune. I'm a quarter German, people. I'm allowed to use Schadenfreude as a goddamn weapon. It is my right. Look. We're not here to try and hit a man while he's down. We're trying to kick him because that's easier. <laughs> and more efficient. Mm -hmm. But next we have the keywords for equipment. So two-handed, self-explanatory. Um, 
Must be held with which means that the two. dwarves, which means that the dwarves can dual wield two handed weapons. There were even rules for that when we read that when that uh read that species. Mm -hmm. Armor break. Attackers gain plus one bonus die against the target for two rounds. Um, armor nice. pierce. When attacking medium armor and above, gain plus one bonus die. Um, caliber inf inflicts piercing damage and shield pierce. Ooh. Uh, crush. Perform a contested balance muscle check. On success, the target is knocked prone. Three round cooldown. Ooh. Um, energy. Inflict non-physical electrical damage. Full reload. Takes <laughs> half movement and an action to reload. I'm think I'm when I hear full reload what what immediately comes to mind it is not the standard type of firearms that people would think but the amount of steps you'd have to take to reload something like say an LMG or the Modus. Mhm. Mm but remember that most sniper rifles have full reload and the soldiers have a way to remove that. Yep. Um great must be held with two hands while attacking and requires Power vitality of six plus to wield. So it's two handed, but better. Mm -hmm. Or worse, depending on how you feel. Yep. Plasma can only be blocked by vibro and plasma weapons. And push, push oh. um, pushback <laughs> pushes targets back a set number unless a successful contested muscle environmental survival balance check is made lot of different ways that you can win that check mm -hmm. i think well this is a game that loves giving people options yep um shield pierce damage inflicted by this weapon ignores shields spell charge holds one spell of current level that may be cast for free once per 24 hour period sustained fire Roll 1d2 and perform that many additional attacks. If any miss, your gun overheats, and you cannot use sustained fire until the round after an unjam action. So, um, Overwatch. Yep. And unique. Requires that many sessions to gain proficiency. Then as a side note, as a side note, Monk, I did the cursed thing I said I was going to do. It's delicious. Good job. Never do it again. Fuck you, I'll do it whenever I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Then we have starting and void armor. Armor is the equipment you wear. You slowly upgrade it through the buying or find through buying or finding improvements over time. At the start of the game, you have starting armor. Light armor is typically robe or cloth armor enhanced with technology to improve the durability while maintaining the weight and freedom of movement. Medium armor is the thickness of standard leather, less movable than cloth, but stronger. Heavy armor is thick and potentially fortified, akin to old metal plate armor. All armor has the innate ability to transform into void armor, which places a small breathable atmosphere around you for one hour before needing to recharge for 30 minutes. You gain proficiency in all equipment bought at character creation. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Then we have shared rules. First with armors. All armors require four sessions to become proficient with. Armors reduce extra movement, not base movement. The highest level of armor is reinforced five. And weapons. All one-handed weapons take three sessions to... Or, or session, typo. To earn proficiency, two-handed weapons take five. Melee. All melee attacks use power unless otherwise stated. Ranged. All ranged attacks use finesse unless otherwise stated. Cone attacks. Cone attacks cannot be used diagonally on square-based maps. So then we get then we get the starting armors. So we have synthetic heavy, which is which has which has a heavy four level, reduce extra movement by two squares. Synthetic medium, which is medi obviously medium armor, reduces extra movement by one square. Synthetic light reduces extra movement by mm. one square. No increases armor. extra movement oh, by one square. Increases extra movement. Sorry. Um, glad that the, glad that 
that there's that difference so that there's actually an appeal to light armor. Because you look at a lot of games and light armor is what is what people use when they can't use any other armor. Mm-hmm. And then no ar no armor slash cloth. Um, ne um, negligible, negligible one. Attackers may add plus two to any die when attacking you. <laughs> and that's that's the starting armors. Then we get to general ones, i.e., the ones you've got to actually pony up for. So first we have light armors. The first one is Arcane Robe, which allows you to reroll a one result once per round on an Arcanting check. Cost 9,000 SC. Then we have Cloak of Natura. Plus one auto hit die during covert checks, and plus one auto hit die when casting Natura magic. Costs 12,000. Of course it does. It's a Natura item, and... Remember that only nat natural magic can only be used by naturalists. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's an item made by naturalists for naturalists. Yep. <laughs> then diplomats in t diplomats attire add plus one to a failed die during a speechcraft roll. Costs eight thousand. Then we have medium armor. First is alloy chainmail, reducing reduce incoming damage by three, minimum of one. And Sneak's Leather Jerkin, plus one in Covert Skill while equipped, ignores the Medium Armor Movement Reduction, which, nice. co which costs 12,000, and Ally Chainmail costs 9,000. Then Synthetic Leather, Adversaries have a minus one bonus die in attacks, costs 8,500. Uh, what I've got here for Alloy Chainmail is 6,000 in price, Monk. No, it must have been, must have been changed. Must have been changed. Um, okay. So next, next is heavy armor. First is defender, plus one in the defense skill while equipped. Then improved, which costs eight thousand. Then improved alloy. Adversaries have minus two bonus dice on attacks, which is which costs six thousand. Then repellers. When deflecting, gain plus one bonus die. If the attacker wins, reduce the damage by your vitality virtue. Minimum of one damage. Costs 15,000. Uh, then we have shields, which grant resistance to physical damage when hit from the front. So you have blaster shields. As an extra attack action, aim your shield at an adjacent adversary within six squares and make a defense check against their armor. On success, inflict your power slash vitality virtue in force damage. Costs 2,000. It's a shield gun better than what your friend made. <laughs> uh, I will never let that go. Hey, if I didn't bring it up, you were going to. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> see, then we have plasma shield. Absorbs plasma bullets, negating plasma ranged attack damage. Can be used once every three rounds. Costs 6,000. Then Sonic Shield. When you take melee damage, reduce it by your vitality virtue. Minimum two. Costs 5,000. Then Spell Shield. Grants resistance to magical damage when hit from the front. Costs 9,000. And I just say that the only thing I imagine the Diplomat's attire for is uh, suitable for some showtime. Because, you know, it would go on our negotiator. <laughs> anyway. Is that, is that sure promise I hear in the distance? <laughs> it's funny you bring the, the the best part. One of my er, one of my early reviews used a used a rainy mood remix of Brick Ballads. <laughs> For those who, for those curious, um, Haven City of Violence, it's one of my early ones, which means it's shit. The game isn't shit. My review is. Uh, 
So next we have melee weapons, and we're starting with one-handers. First is the chain saber. Which... Okay, I hold on. I am familiar with the chain sword of old. We both are. Mm -hmm. As much as we hate GW, we 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 love the chain swords. How the fuck do you get a chain saber? I think I think it's I think it's just same principle, just smaller. I'm pretty sure we've seen that, that done in certain uh, manga. I mean, you're not wrong. I just I had to bring that up. Mm -mm. Also, didn't one of Uryu Ishida's quote unquote swords count as that kind of? His swords weren't swords. I know what you're talking about. Um, they were called uh, the Schneiders. They were. <laughs> he used them like swords at first, but yes, they rotated uh, Deyatsu along the edge like a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. No, they were giant fucking arrows. He was just using them like swords. Yeah. You know, like a monster hunter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. But Chain Saber does 1d6 plus 3 slashing and adds plus 1 to a failed dice roll on attack. Costs 1,500. And given how cheap it is, I'd, it's understandable why Chain Sabers showed up as starting equipment with some with some classes we saw. Mm -hmm. Then Combat Sword, which does 1d6 slashing. Automatically deflect one melee non-plasma attack every four rounds. I can see why it costs 6,000 6, SC. Mm -hmm. See, then we have Deathblade. Wait, what's, what's he doing here? <laughs> oh. Does 1d6 plus 5 slashing. Does these double-bladed daggers are a favorite weapon of assassins. Roll with one auto-hit die when attacking from covert. Unique 5 finesse. Costs so 9,000. Yep. So it's 5 sessions to become proficient because it's unique 5. And it uses finesse instead of power. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, then we have gun sword. Which does one which does one D six slashing. On a successful hit, fire the gun as an extra action and deal an additional five piercing damage. Clip fifteen caliber. Costs twenty two hundred. <laughs> For any of you who've played the game, I just brought you back to the year nineteen ninety eight. Um See, then we have Plasma Saber. Does 2d6 plasma. On a successful hit, inflict armor break. Absorbs plasma bullets as a reaction. Costs 8,000. Legally distinct. The best kind of distinct. <laughs> actually, no. Th actually, no. This wouldn't apply because that thing only re that thing only redirects pla plasma bullets. This thing absorbs them. Yep. Um. Uh, then we have Plasma Whip Blades. Does 1d6 like slashing. These blades have a whip attachment installed into the blade, allowing attacks on a target up up to a, at up to a three square range. These inflict 1d6 plus three plasma damage at range. Finesse costs three thousand. So you you can use it as a normal slashing weapon, or you can use the whip. Mm-hmm. Interesting. For whatever reason, I keep thinking of a plasma version of Ivy's snake sword. <laughs> oh. Then we have then we have power gauntlet. Does vitality plus six force damage. May equip both hands with power gauntlets. If you do, you may add pips to all attacks rather than the first one. Must buy each separately. Uses muscle slash power to perform attacks. 
costs fifteen hundred. <laughs> hmm. See, then we like have, another <laughs> another legally distinct item. Yep. Then we have Sonic Knife. Um, one d one d three slashing. When flanking an adversary, attacking their back or side, deal an additional half player level in damage. Finesse. Costs 3500 Good for our smuggler. Mm -hmm. um, then we have Sonic Rapier. Does 1d6 plus 3 piercing. Just has the finesse tag. And only costs 1000 see. Then we have Sonic Saber. Does 1d6 slashing. Only costs 700 the Sonic, whenever it comes to the Sonic weapons, why do I keep thinking of the whole concept of a mono monomolecular cutter? I don't know, but <clears throat> to me it just sounds like a vacuum weapon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, next we have Gunspear. <laughs> Speaking of Monster Hunter. one d Does 1d6 piercing. This item has a two square reach and may be fired as an extra action on a target up to five squares away. May use finesse if used two handed. Costs 1500. Not just Monster Hunter, <clears throat> Final Fantasy 14. Mm hmm. Nail Danus. Na na I, I keep saying Deus because. Nail Van Darnus. No, I keep saying Deus because the Nail Deus Darnus uh, battle keeps. keeps my, it, it occupies my brain for eternity. Mm -hmm. Fuck Neil Deostarnas. Yeah, I'm not. I don't feel like going back. I don't feel like going back to that raid. I don't even like raiding. Um. So next we get to the two-handed weapons, starting with the Carbon Great Scythe, which deals two d six slashing. This weapon has a two square reach and may deal five physical damage to an adjacent target on a successful hit. Great. Costs ten thousand. It's got that great weapon tag. Mm-hmm. Um. Then we have the great chain sword, which does two d six plus five slashing. When attacking, activate the blade as an extra action to deal eighteen damage instead. Great. Costs nine thousand. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So. Great chain sword is two d six plus five slashing. Yep. If that's all you're adding, that the highest you can get there is seventeen. So activating the blade as an extra action just deals a flat eighteen. But of course, you know there are other modifiers you may later get from features and such that make just the normal damage be a better idea. Mm -hmm. Um. So that then is the pl is the Plasma Greatsword. Does 2d6 plus 5 plasma. This weapon cannot be deflected by any shield or weapon. Great and armor break. Costs 15,000. Nice. See, then we have Power Hammer. Does 2 times power in force damage. Perform an attack as an extra action on adjacent adversary at minus 1 bonus dice after performing an attack. Great has great and crush as tags. Costs eight thousand. Uh. <laughs> um I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure somebody who knows what they're doing with a power hammer could could um re could replicate the hammer in Donkey Kong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Next is the Sonic Great Saber. Does 1d6 plus 5 force. No, te no tags. Only costs 1800. And we have the Sonic Katana. Does 2d6 force damage. Gain one auto hit die when attacking. Inflict 15 damage in instead of 2d6 if a 6 is rolled on damage. F has the finesse tag. And costs eight thousand. Is that a six on either of the two d six damage dice? I think it. I think it means if a six is rolled total. I I want clarification. 
I, I think it means that one of the two dice that you have in the 2d6 rolls a 6, then you just get a 15. Because mm-hmm. because I, I think rolling 6 total out of 2d6 is... That, that's high, that's that's lower than where the median is. The median on, on, on 2d6 is 7. That's where the middle of the bell curve is. Is a 7. Ugh. So, um, yeah, I, I want a clarification on that. Uh, please and thank you, Trevor. I would mm-hmm. really like to know whether it's six on the face of one of the dice or six total. Mm-hmm. So next is the next is the archaic weapons, starting with carbon dagger, which does one d three slashing. Reroll one failed die every three rounds. Finesse. Only costs 600. Then the Carbon Sword, which does 1d6 slashing. Only costs 400. Then Unarmed, just does one force damage. If you have the expertise Fisticuffs, this attack deals 1d6 damage and uses power, finesse, or vitality. And then... Then we have Hard Light Gauntlet, does four force damage. Once every three rounds after successfully hitting a, a target, you may punch another target up to two squares away from you. Cost 2,500. I hear Hard Light Gauntlet, and why do I keep thinking of the Omni Tool from Mass Effect? I can understand why. Fuck you, Kai Lang. Mm-hmm. So then we have Stun Baton. Does 1d3 electrical. This weapon inflicts non-lethal damage. On a successful hit, the adversary must perform a contested muscle vitality check against your attack. On a failure, they are stunned for one round. May only affect the same target twice per combat. Costs 2,000. Hmm. So that's... I know some people would say that's a, that's a weapon for um, for aggressive peacekeeping. I'd say it's a weapon tailor made for bounty hunters. Mm-hmm. Because after all, you're gonna get more money if they're alive than if they're dead. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's see, then we have the vibro pole arm, which does one d six piercing. This weapon has a two square reach, two handed, costs twenty five hundred. And then the vibro staff, which does one d six force damage. Use this weapon as a one-handed or a two-handed. If two-handed, deal seven damage. Costs 3,500. Um, the Vibro Polearm and Staff, there's jokes I could make, but I'm not going to. Such jokes belong elsewhere. And then we get to ranged weapons. So start uh, starting off, we have auto rifles. Which I'd, I'd imagine this is this is going to be your standard comp. This is going to be your standard, um, quote unquote, assault rifle. Even though even though there's no such thing. I think we just call them combat rifles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the. Vale, Vale's version of the of the basic rifle every, everybody's meant everybody's meant to use. Mm-hmm. So first we have the blaster rifle. Does one d six plus one damage. Range is ten twenty. Clip is fifteen energy. Has the effects of sustained fire and two handed. Costs four thousand. Then we have caliber rifle. Does one d six plus three. Range is fourteen twenty. Clip is 15 caliber. Does shield has shield pierce. Costs 2,500. And then plasma rifle does 1d6 plus 3. Ranges 1020. Clip is 15 plasma. Does armor pierce. And costs 2,500. Um, Those are all pretty standard. Yeah. Blaster rifle, I'd say, is akin, is akin to the battle rifle we've seen in countless video games. Um, or just any blaster rifle from from the the, the empire. Yeah. Um, caliber rifle. Mm, 
since it since since it is sh given the given the way they describe caliber, um, I'm th I'm thinking some I'm thinking something like the DMR. Mm. Okay. Uh, especially, I'm actually some, something I'm really happy about here. I remember that the original caliber tag says inflicts piercing damage and shield pierce, but he made sure to to note here in the ranged weapon section that the caliber pist the the, the calibers all have shield pierce, mm. just in case you forgot what the caliber tag itself means. Very nice. A a, a a um a useful a useful application of the of redundancy. Mm -hmm. So then we get to sniper rifles, and we only have two. The first is the auto sniper, which does one d six plus four, range is twenty forty, clip is seven energy, it has the effects of sustained right sustained fire and two handed, price is twenty five hundred. I have <laughs> a full auto sniper weapon. I'm trying to picture that and I'm just laughing. It's okay, Monk. I've got your back on this one. It's just um it's just a a um what were they called? Uh PKM. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a PKM. Pretty sure it's just a PKM. Mm -hmm. Which is a light machine gun. It's 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 a it's a it's gas operated and air cooled and belt fed and it has a long a long distance to it, sort of, kind of. I mean Effective effective range is only eight hundred meters, <laughs> which is certainly further than the twenty forty here named here. Yeah, because like I said, if the squares are five per, that's that's you know a hundred to two hundred feet. Eight hundred meters is like I want to say. I'm I'm doing the math in my head right now. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> five hundred and eighty squares. Yeah. <laughs> of course, that's again assuming the square is five feet. Depending on what what your battle scale is, the square sizes are also going to be fluctuating. Mm -hmm. See, then we have the tactical sniper. Does it have the bean holder? No, unfortunately, the tactical bean holder is only the property of AK Guy Industries. Let's see, does two d six plus eight damage? Range is forty eighty. Clip is three caliber, and has shield pierce, unique three, full reload, two handed, and great. Costs twelve thousand. This is just a Barrett M eighty um. Barrett M ninety five A one no M eighty nine A one. I'm mixing two numbers again. Two handed and great. This is the fucking Harkonnen. Hmm. No, this is just a Barrett monk. This is just any Barrett anti materiel rifle. Except with a smaller magazine. That's it. Mm -hmm. So then we get to pistols, starting with the caliber pistol, which does 1d6 damage, ranges, costs 2,000. Say the say the caliber pistol would be thing would be a could would be equivalent to something like say a deagle. Yep, deagle definitely 50 AE. Oh, then the combat pistol. Damage 1d6. In fact, all of these are 1d6 damage. Um, range is 4-8. Ha has a clip of 8 energy. When used in melee, you do not suffer the melee penalty. Has finesse and power. Costs 2,000. So, 
Any sta any standard bl any standard blaster pistol in any science fiction setting ever. Hi, Han Solo. Mm -hmm. Remember, folks, Han shot first. Then the plasma pistol, which it which ha which again one d six damage, range is six to twelve. Clip is ten plasma. Has the plasma tag. Cost twenty five hundred. This reminds me of the plasma pistol from Halo, but fortunately, I don't think you can overcharge it. And even more fortunately, you can't do the overcharge that we saw in Cursed Halo. <laughs> you no, know, where it where it takes an assload <clears throat> amount of time, but it goes off like a nuke. I remember. Um. So next we have the next we have shotguns. Always, a, always a favorite mainstay of mine, and one could say, "Yeah, basic, basic bitch jo going with the going with the shotguns." But hey, you can usually tell a bad video game if they have if they have a bad shotgun. Just saying. Uh -huh. So first one is the auto shotgun, one d six damage, range is eight eighteen, clip is fifteen energy. Has the effects of area field, two square cone, and sustained fire. Costs four th costs four thousand. Then the carbine shotgun. Um, one has three d six for damage. Range is six eighteen. Um, clip is ten caliber. Effects area field, five square cone, shield pierce, and great. Costs nine thousand. <laughs> Um, with the auto shotgun, with any any regular old sh any shotgun that were that that is semi-auto would probably fit it would probably fit under that. I'm trying to think of what would be a good analogy for the carbine shotgun. Super shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I didn't have to think but a second, monk. I'm like monk. It's it's just Doom Slayer. It's just the super shotgun. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, seriously, a five square cone for an area field. <laughs> Jesus. And that's a five square cone after the shot has traveled. I'm pretty sure because mm. they do have it. A, they do have a, a normal range, so I'm guessing that's a five square cone from where it hits. Yeah, which now which it, means it's, that it's a... that that technically means that shotguns are flak cannons. <laughs> they shoot out a projectile that then explodes in a cone. That's a flak cannon. Flak gang, rise up! Woo! <laughs> so then we have staves. Which oh, I, oh, of course we should note that shotguns and staves have the two-handed tag by default. Um, first is the Staff of Arcane, does one d six damage, range is sixteen thirty two, clip is twenty Arcana, um, has the effects of spell charge and elemental damage, costs four thousand. Spell we, charge, you can put one spell inside of it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Staff of Battle. Does 1d6 damage, has a range of 10, 20, has 20 energy for its clip. When used in melee, use your primary virtue. The damage increases to 1d6 plus 5 in melee. Great. Costs 4,800. And then we have the Staff of Natura. Does 1d6 damage, range is 14, 28. Clip is, tw is 20 Natura. May be used instead to heal an ally by eight hit points. Spell charge and natural damage costs sixty five hundred. Nice. Um, as an aside, I appreciate that casters have a staff weapon that isn't just uh, that isn't just a quarter staff. They're never gonna they shouldn't be using. Yeah, that's so, I like. That's, that's always been a pet peeve of mine. Which, you know, makes sense. These are stabs that, even if you got into the thick of it, you could hit people with. Yeah, whereas a lot of the times, even in games I like, the the idea of you, the idea of them being able to use that staff in melee, um, people are like, no, no, the, no, no, melee is for the martial characters. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be useless in, in a close range fight. Which doesn't make sense. If you're a spellcaster in close range, you should just be able to cast that spell in such a way that, uh, well, the person in front of you isn't going to be very happy. Uh, or at the or at the very least, give some give people a ba a basic a spell version of a basic attack that they can use for free. 
which I know some people say would lean in, lean too much into MMO design, but does it really? I mean, even if it does, fuck you. MMO design got something right. Yeah, and I I just like pick, I like picking on the, as we've established, I like picking on the whole the whole idea that taking ideas from video games is somehow verboten. I know it's stupid. Mm -hmm. Let's see, then we have bows. So, Which are two-handed by default. Yep. Obviously. Uh, so we start with caliber longbow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> caliber. Two d six plus five. Range thirty four sixty. Um, clip is two caliber. Has the effects of shield pierce giant and uses power or finesse. Costs ninety five hundred. This is a fucking this is the fucking longbow from Monster Hunter. Yep, you're shooting you're shooting giant harpoons at people. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm surprised that the clip is two caliber. With a physical bow, you should be drawing and shooting new arrow every time. I like it. Yeah. Um. So then we have the plasma bow. Um, three d six damage. Range is third. Range is thirty fifty five. Um, clip is five plasma. Has armor pierce and plasma. Costs twelve thousand. And lastly, we have the short bow. One d six damage. Range fourteen twenty eight. Clip is five energy. Has sustained fire. And and pri and only costs three thousand. I get the feeling the bows are more like. Bow guns. Uh, like the bowcaster of the Wookiees? What? <laughs> I have a hard time I have a hard time imagining sustained fire with a bow. I don't. Go play um Elden Ring, use a short bow and it's barrage ash of war. <laughs> okay. Doink, 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 doink. <laughs> Okay, Ugh. fair. Um, next is flamethrowers, with the universal tag of all flamethrowers inflict burning that lasts one round. I should hope so. A flamethrower that doesn't do oh a flamen werfer that does not werf flamen is not a flamen werfer at all. Let's see, first we have the flame pistol. Um, one d six. Is that you? <laughs> what? Cannonus, is that you? <laughs> um, 1d6 plus 3 damage. Range 3-6. Clip is 5 fuel. Um, it has the effect area field 3 square line. Um, does 6,000 damage. Not 6,000 6, damage. Price is 6,000. What the hell am I saying? Um, then we have flamethrower. Does 2d6 plus 5 damage. Range is 5-10. Clip is 5 fuel. Has the effects of area field, five square cone, and two handed. Costs a hundred and twenty thousand. Are these flamethrowers or melta guns? Are, are are you sure it costs a hundred and twenty thousand, monk? Twelve thousand. Thank you. I was like, that's an extra zero, monk. Yeah, sorry about that. It's all good. But ser seriously, I. You have the you have the range and the air and the area field. Are we sure these aren't are we sure these aren't melta guns? No, they're flamethrowers for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Oh. Let's see. Then we have wands. We have the, starting with the dueler's dueler's wand. One d six damage. Seven and fourteen range. Ten arcana clip. You may dual wield these wands without the negatives to spell casting. Gain an additional arcanting action once every four rounds. Cost six thousand. Remember the hurt and burn gag in Penny Arcade? Yeah. Yeah. Or to to make this even worse, imagine imagine a caster going gun kata with dueler's wands. Yep. Oh. Uh, See, then we have the Electro Steel Wand. D 1d6 damage, 714 range, 10 energy clip, 
Inflict electrical damage. No. Costs 1,500. I thought it was going to inflict steel damage. Now my Pokemon types are all fucked up. Mm -hmm. See, then we have the Void Stick. No damage, range 10, two Arcana Clip. This Maybe... is my Void Stick! <laughs> May be used as a reaction two times per day when a spell is successfully cast. Perform a contested Arcanting check. On a success, inflict half level plus five force damage to the caster. Cost 6,000. So when a bad guy casts a spell, you can go, I'm going to use my void stick mm -hmm. and reach into your pants and everybody's going to be like, what the fuck are you talking about? And you pull out this wand and cause whoever was casting a spell to fucking die. Mm -hmm. See, next is wand of battle, 1d6 damage, 612 range, 10 energy clip. This wand uses your arcanting, costs 3,000. Yep, yep. So then we have grenades. It's Grenaten! Yay! <laughs> First we have explosive, 1d6 plus 4 damage, area field 3x3. Three three. Um, push and has the effects pushback 3, force, costs 500. So good old. Good. So you're. Frag good out. Old frag out. Yep, frags. Then we have essence grenades. Deals damage equal to player level. Range is um fr range it not range area field is five by five. Causes fear, ether. Um, costs fifteen hundred. So psych out grenades. Um no necromancer grenades ether damage monk. Yep. You're inflicting the fear of death on them. I will introduce you. <laughs> so. Next is Force Grenades. No damage. Oh, whoop, forgot one. Flame Grenades are next. 10 damage. 9 by 9 area field. All beings inflicted by burning does fire damage. 2,500 as the cost. <laughs> it's an incendiary. Yeah. Um, then we have Force Grenades. No damage, 5x5 five five area, pushback 9, um, cost 2,000. Crack grenades? No, because crack grenades still kill you. Fair enough. Um, then we have plasma, 12 damage, range 5x5, five five, as the effects of armor pierce, armor break, and plasma does 2,500. Oh, sorry, not does 2,500, cost 2,500. Did that again. Mm -hmm. Good job. Um, next, shrapnel, three d six damage, four by four, four by four, um, area field, and has shield pierce and piercing, cost fifteen hundred. Hey, it's the uh, it's the nail bomb from Erasers. Mm -hmm. Well, now that I think about it, would force be akin to would the force grenades be akin to um, impact grenades? Maybe. That's what I would say, but impact grenades don't exactly have the, a big AoE. Yeah, that's why I said maybe. Uh, let's see, then smoke grenade, then smoke grenades. No damage. Five by five area gives all allies a plus two auto hit dice when performing covert checks. Costs one thousand. So this is the thing you break out for ninja vanish. It's your smoke bomb. Mm hmm. See, next is void grenades. No damage. Nine by nine, nine by nine area field. Everything within the area performs a tough five balance muscle check. On a failure, they're forced towards the center of the area field and lose their reactions for the turn. Costs three thousand. It's a black hole grenade. Yep. It, it's it's a gravity well grenade. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and then we have archaic weapons. Um, Caliber Shuriken. I was kidding about the ninja thing. Um, deals one d deals one d six plus three. Um, range is two times fin range is two times finesse. Clip is three. Does finesse and has finesse and slashing. Only costs two fifty. Question. 
Another clarification here. It says it's a caliber shuriken, and it also uh, doesn't specify what the shot type is in the uh, in the actual clip column. When we've seen caliber, they've been cal. It's always said clip number slash caliber. Since this weapon is called a caliber shuriken, does it still have the caliber status effects, meaning that it does that it does uh, shield pierce? Or is it just being called caliber because it's a physical item? Mm-hmm. Clarification, please, Trevor. I would appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So next is the double shot pistol. Does 1d3 damage, range is 10, 20. Um, clip is 2, energy. It's a derringer. After you attack with this weapon, you may perform a free attack with with it if you have the clip for it. Costs 3,000. And energy blaster. 1d6 damage, 15, 20 range, 12 energy clip. Two-handed. Costs 1,000. I get the feeling energy blaster is like a primitive a primitive version of the of the energy rifles we saw earlier. Yep, probably just a like bog standard blaster. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Energy handbow, 1d6 damage, 10 18 range, 6 energy for clip, no tags, costs 800. And this last one is fucking bonkers. <laughs> Plasma Chakram. 1d6 plus 3 damage. 2 times power range. 1 cl- clip is 1, obviously. When thrown, perform an average 3 weapons master check. On a success, recall the weapon inflicting slashing damage again. May use as a melee weapon. Costs 1500. Ba, 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 ba. And now for anyone else listening, I've taken you all the way back to 1994. Because <laughs> everybody remembers Lucy Lawless. Mm-hmm. Um, so ne- next is ammo. And just the types of ammo and how much each cl- costs. Each clip refills your weapon fully. Um, caliber costs 100. Energy costs 150. Fuel canister costs 150. Plasma costs 200. Then we have the unique ammo types. Arcana costs 600. Natura costs 600. And Sniper Caliber costs 200. Wow. Maintaining a weapon like that is expensive. Mm -hmm. Then we have musical instruments. Music will never go out of style. While these instruments are easy to use, they're difficult to master. It takes three full successful songs for proficiency in an instrument. So we have accordion, 1,500. Flute, 1,500. Guitar, 2,000. Harmonica, 300. Keyboard mobile, 3,000. Mandolin, 1,500. Melodica, 2,000. Ocarina, 1,000. Ukulele, 1,000. Violin, 1,000. Surprised that a guitar is more expensive than an accordion. Accordions are not cheap. Yep. See, then we have general items. And I'm go- I'm going to power through this as best I can. One-handed weapon parts. Meant to craft various one-handed weapons. 1,000. Two-handed weapon parts. Same as, same as one-handed, just with two-handed weapons. 2,000. Alchemist kit. This tool is used for the conversion of elements to other elements and for the creation of potions. It comes with 15 flasks, two vials of village rock dust, an alchemical burner, a potion book, a crystal crusher, and an extractor used to take useful items from creatures. When crafting potions using this kit, reduce the difficulty by one. May use arcanting, analysis, or crafting when performing checks using this kit. Costs 18,000. Alchemy is expensive, my friends. Let's see. Antidote shot. This simple syringe cures the sickly and drained conditions and prevents poison for one minute. Costs 2,000. Arcane amulet. A symbol increasing magical potency. Adds plus one to a failed die when casting spells. Costs 1,500. I'm pretty sure anybody doing spell casting would want this because you don't want to be... 
you don't want to be around when um when somebody really fucks up at a spell. Yep. Then we have Augmenter. An Augmenter adds one augmentation slot onto a vehicle, armor, or weapon that can accept them. After adding a slot, it cannot be used for another three days and may only create three slots at most. A vehicle may not have more than three augmentations at once unless otherwise stated. Costs 8500 And the way it the way it creates slots over a period of days. Why do I keep thinking of something like an STC or you know a three D printer? That too. Let's see, auto fill patch, a patch that quickly fills fills in holes and heals mechanical units by ten HP. Costs one fifty. Um. Oh, does that mechanical units include include a certain race we've covered? The prototypes? I believe it does, actually. Yep. Next is Auto Loader. You do not need to spend your movement action to reload your weapon. Cost three thousand. So you can keep you can keep as long as you as long as you still have ammo, you can still you can keep the DACA flowing. Mm-hmm. Um Auto Translator, well with plus one auto hit die when learning an unknown language while using this device, costs nine thousand. Let's see, then a paper book. It's a basic leather bound book, costs six hundred. Then a builder's wrench. Allows you to effectively craft items and repair ships, mechs, and prototypes by ten percent of the max HP. Adds plus two to a failed die on mechanics checks. Costs thirty five hundred. Great, now I'm thinking of two for it again. <laughs> see then communicator. All PCs start with a communicator that allows for basic communication among party members free crafters kit this kit gives you plus one bonus die on crafting checks cost 1000 crystal crusher this small metallic box is used to safely crush magic crystals into a usable powder costs a thousand data pad of medical knowledge one auto hit die on non-attack based medicament skill checks it contains helpful information on diseases and surgery procedures for all core species costs 2000 certainly be important for our combat medic. Uh-huh. Next is data tablet, a basic tablet that can take notes and upload information. Then dechanter. This item can cancel minor arcane barriers and negative simple enchantments. Each dechanter stone has one use before the voidic rune expires. Costs so 2000. Data... Yeah, the data tablet costs 1200 by the way. You didn't Do mention you wanna... that. Yeah, sorry. Next, eyeglass scanner. This item gives you plus one dial when you perform observation analysis checks and allows you to see through one square thick walls. Costs 1,000. It's Next. a techno monocle. Mm -hmm. Next is filled water basin. This small jug contains 10 uses of water, roughly equal to 3 liters, can be refilled. Costs 1,500. 1,500 credits for a 3 liter water bottle? What the fuck? Mm hmm. Oh, next is flask, a general flask primarily used for potion crafting, costs 250. Then grenade belt. This belt holds up to 8 grenades safely and allows you to remove and throw one of the 8 as an extra action rather than a full action, costs 3500. Then grenade casing, a casing using the crafting of grenades, costs 500. Hack program. Hack programs use a programming sleight of hand check to unlock electrically locked doors. Each program has two uses and its data be becomes corrupted when the check critically fails. Costs 800. I'm really reminded of slicing. <laughs> um, hidden pistol. You may use half your movement or as an incidental outside of combat to fire the hidden pistol up your sleeve. It deals 1d6 damage, but does not add your finesse to its damage. Costs 1,500. There's your Derringer. Indeed. Oh, next is Jetpack. This grants the user 5 squares of flight movement. In the Void, you move more effectively in the Void suit. Can maintain flight for 4 rounds before recharging for 7 rounds. Costs 2,000. I'm pretty sure the... I'm pretty sure the... Um, 
the field, field knight field knight has has ways to make that more effective. The field knight would have a field day with the jetpack. Ah. Next is lock picks. This item can be used with a sleight of hand check to unlock a non-magical slash electrically locked door. Each pick has one use and breaks if the check critically fails. Cost 500. Then we have magic crystals. And the cost varies, so arcane in order, 1,000 each. Reflection and shadow, 2,000 each. Presence, 1,500 each. Chaos, 6,000 each. Yep. Let's see, then we have Mechanics Guide. A guide to mechanics and repair by Mr. A. Bell. Wait, when did Art Bell, when did Art Bell go out into the void? <laughs> uh, plus one bonus die and mechanics check. Costs 1,800. Medikit. This kit is stocked with eight jars of meta water, 16, not 16, 15 synthetic skin, a data pad of, ma a data pad of magical, oh, medical knowledge, la. One surgery tool, five meta shots, and one hover gurney. A hover gurney allows you to carry a medium-sized unit on it up to up to half a square off the ground. Costs ninety-five hundred. Uh, then we have meta shots. Heals the target in or out of combat for fifteen HP as an action. Includes two meta shots. Costs fifteen hundred. And meta water. Heals the target outside of combat for 25 HP. May, on, may be only used once per healing per 24-hour period. Costs 500. And Potion Book. A book that grants the user plus one bonus die on analysis and crafting checks when building and analyzing potions. List guides to building common potions. Costs 3,000. And Reflection Shards. These shards are hardened energy from the Realm of Reflection. They deal 8 plus player level of reflective damage if you are a Mimic. If you are not, they deal 1d6 damage. They may be thrown using Finesse or Judgment if you are a Mimic. Costs 150. <laughs> well, some, well, the Mimic is going to be stocking up on these. Didn't they start with a whole bunch to begin with? Yeah, they're probably going to... They're prob and... They're probably going to be able to get a whole lot more because of how cheap these things are. Well, I mean, they're kind of vital to mimicry. Mm -hmm. Let's see, next is Rocket Boots. These boots give plus one square of max movement. When activated, launch into the air three squares up, three round cooldown. Costs 1,500. These boots are made for rockets, <laughs> and that's just what they'll do. Because one of these days, these boots are going to rock it onto you. <laughs> repair kit. Fully stocked with 10 repair programs, 15 autofill patch, mechanics guide, and builder's wrench. Cost 8500 Repair program. Heals the mechanical target in or out of combat for 15 HP as an action. Includes three programs. May repair a mechanical target three times per day. Cost 1000 and science kit, a kit used for crafting items such as acids, poisons, etc. Includes two warmers, five beakers, and five vials. Uses analysis checks. Very nice. And surgery tool, allows you to perform surgeries and implants. Adds plus one to a failed die when performing the check. Costs 2500 Then synthetic skin, used to cover a unit's open wounds. Stops bleeding and heals one HP can be used to remove bleeding as many times per day as needed. Requires an extra action to use. Costs 100. Nice. Then Trap Kit. A Trap Kit grants plus one bonus die on sleight of hand checks used to disarm traps. This kit allows the user to place two traps per short rest. It takes a channel two action to place a trap that affects all beings in a 3x3 three three area field after activating. Explosive traps deal 2d6 force damage. Poison traps inflict poison. Net traps grasp for net for one round. Costs 5,000. There's a bounty hunter's kit for you. Mm -hmm. Then we get to augmentations. Augmentations are upgrades for armor, weapons, vehicles, and machines. They require a hard four difficulty check of mechanics or programming to implement. All one-handed weapons and shields can hold one augmentation slot. 
Two hold two handed weapons can hold three. Armor can hold two augmentation slots. Nice. And that's saying something because the two handed weapons were already on the ridiculous end of things. Now they're even more ridiculous. Although and you the can still have op open hands when wielding a two handed weapon as a dwarf. Mm hmm. So first we have charm phasers. Um, which is a which is a weapon type. Once per day, you can target an adversary as an attack. If you succeed, it casts False Companion on them for free. Costs fifteen thousand. Number one set phases to charm. <laughs> then hardened armor, obviously for armor, increases your armor difficulty by one level to at most reinforced. Costs forty five thousand. Um. With that in mind, what would it, what if you if your armor is already reinforced before that? Um, what do what would this do? Um, I don't think you could install another one. Mm -hmm. Remember, armor only starts at at most at, at a heavy four, so it, you could install at least one of these to bring it up to reinforced five. Mm -hmm. So that, then we have Hidden Slot. Um, allows you to store up to two tiny items or one small handheld item like a pistol, etc. Costs 5,000. Uh, which means that small handheld item like a pistol, which given some of the pistols that we saw, um, could somebody use this to hide, say, a flame pistol? Yes. <laughs> Trolls. Fuck you. On fire you are. Mm -hmm. Let's see then. Noise dampener for, for armor. Gain plus one bonus die on covert checks. Reduce noise to muted when crouching. Cost 7,500. Then overcharger for weapons. Once every four rounds, you may use this augmentation in your weapon to inflict plus 3d6 in additional damage on your successful attack. Costs 35,000. Jesus. Okay, now we, re now we really have the charged version of the plasma pistol. Yep, put it on the plasma pistol, why don't we? Or put, or put, it, on, or put it on the um, bows that we saw. On the caliber great bow? Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, then reflectors for shields. Twice per short rest when a melee or ranged attack hits you with your shield equipped, inflict that same damage up to two times vitality to the attacker, cost 25,000. Nice. Then repair augment for drones. Allows a drone to assist you in checks. It gives plus one bonus die to on your checks. It can. It may also use your mechanics check as well. Costs ten thousand. Nice. Um, that's definitely going to be for the architect. Uh, then shield generator for armor adds the recharging energy shield of five. Costs eight. Costs eighteen thousand. Then stun setting. We were kidding about the Star Wars about these Star Trek jokes. For weapon, you may attempt to stun a target you have successfully attacked with this weapon. An adversary must perform a contested muscle vitality check against your attack with minus one bonus die. On a success, the target is stunned. This may only be successfully performed on the same target once every three rounds. Costs 10,000. Nice. Uh, and void shield for armor grants a recharging energy shield of five that reduces... Damage from arcane attacks and effects costs twenty two thousand. Interesting augmentations. Mm -hmm. See, then we get to cybernetics. Cybernetics are advanced mechanical parts that can improve an individual or replace a part that has been lost in battle. They range from an electronically planted cybernetics to highly advanced prosthetic limbs. So we start with the augmentable prosthetics. Augmentable prosthetics are given two augmentation slots at creation. They also are more durable and resistant to damaging effects. Costs 15,000. 
and a basic cybernetic prosthetic. Basic cybernetic prosthetics that are that replace parts on beings which have been removed. It has basic functions and can be used as a normal appendage. The cost is based on how big the prosthetic is. Minimum of two thousand. Uh, then we have cybernetic eyes grants plus one to observation and fifteen squares of dark vision. Costs fifteen thousand. Then the extendable prosthetic. These can be attached to a robotic chassis or a cybernetic prosthetic. This gives the player an additional one square reach. Costs six thousand. Not extendable that way, you perverts. <laughs> uh, then we have quick load plate. This unique cybernetic plate is attached to the hand and allows the user to reload one weapon for free every four rounds. Costs eight thousand. Then second skin. While not wearing armor, you are treated as we as wearing heavy four armor. Costs thirty thousand. So you can not wear armor and get or wear uh, and and get all of the the fun benefits of not having armor bog you down, but you still take damages if wearing heavy armor. Hmm. Why would you ever wear armor and not just pay for this? <laughs> Probably because of how much it costs. True. You learn that in like a few sessions. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. Next is Virtual Intelligence Units. Virtual Intelligence, or VI, units are frequently used to control mechanical items, ships, and other vehicles. VIs are programs without a learning intelligence. They typically have one focus and are incapable of learning new techniques outside of their original programming. Artificial Intelligence, AIs, are programs capable of learning techniques outside of their original programming and often come with a personality. Below are some of the starter VI units available for purchase. I'm feeling Mass Effect-y right now. Mm -hmm. um, so first we have the autocorrector, a VI implemented into an eyeglass scanner that allows you to reroll one failed die when attacking. Costs 7,000. Drone. Drones are small VI-controlled units that follow your commands. Drones can perform simple tasks such as applying basic repair units, opening doors, moving items, etc. All drones come with one augmentation slot, cost 15000 mm -hmm. Except if you're an architect, then you get one for free. Uh, and all well. I can think of is, Jack, open this door. And ELI, or, e or Eli, stands for the Electronic Learning Intelligence and is a fully sentient AI. He has now I'm really feeling Mass Effect. He has access to the galaxy's galactic internet and rolls with a plus two auto-hit dice on all knowledge checks. While attached to a ship, he may fully <laughs> perform one of the checks needed to warp or jump for free once every other jump. Eli may also, may also learn the abilities of standard VI units, cost 25,000. You know, it's very clear that this is just male Edie, but good taste. I like it. Mm -hmm. 25,000 credits for male Edie? Man, we don't have to go through all the black box technology stuff like it, like with the with the, the Cerberus? Awesome. Mm -hmm. so next is Flight VI. This VI grants an automatic 5 on a die when performing piloting skill checks. This may be activated once every three rounds. Costs 4,000. And next is Onboard VI. Ship VIs correct simple mistakes made by the crew. While your ship is equipped with this VI, all PCs once every three rounds or five minutes can reroll to failed attack or skill check. That involves the ship. Costs 8,000. Um, just... Don't have don't have Hal. So could we joke about this being Hal, but actually nice? Um, no, because Hal was actually sentient. This is just an autocorrect program for everybody. Yeah. So then we have. Sim oh, it's not like we're, we're we'll ever have to ask him to open the pod bay doors. Mm -hmm. Then we have simple potions. Simple potions are still rare to find, but can be crafted using several varied ingredients. All potions start with a base. 
one flask, one serving of purified water, and one crushed order or arcane crystal. So the, we, have three, we have three examples. A healing potion costs one presence crystal and one healer's root. In Heals addition to the original flask water and yep. crushed order arcane. Yep. Heals for 1d6 once per day. Then poison one ether adds one ether crystal and one claw claw of a mecha ripper. Coats a, <laughs> coats a clip or blade with poison for two rounds. And then brilliance, which costs two which adds two presence crystals crystals to the ingredients. Once per short rest, this potion will grant the user an auto hit on their next two checks. Nice. Auto hit dice is nice. And the last the penultimate thing that we have is role playing baubles. Which are a col it says the following col contains optional trinkets that may be picked by you or your GM at character creation as part of your character's story. Unless your GM approves it, you cannot pick the same bauble of another PC. You may work with your GM to come up with a unique bauble to fit your backstory. And there's not a whole lot of reason to go over all of these. They're um, gonna they're akin to the one unique thing. Yeah, I'm I'm going to read uh, a few of them that I find uh, super super interesting. Uh, first is a small tech cube with nine squares on each face. The cube is unlit. However, when a square on the cube is touched, it glows one of the primary and secondary colors. The cubes may be moved. No matter how much you mess with it, however, it cannot be solved. It's a tiny little puzzle cube. It's cool. <laughs> um, the second one is an electronic novel that seems to write about your life in haiku. And then the final one, which I just thought was very flavorful. A crystal from the realm of Everchange that glows bright purple the closer it is to a child of Everchance. I think that's supposed to be Everchange. Um, if held by a child of Everchange, an image of a dancing ballerina appears. The ballerina twirls around the holder, lighting a 3x3 three three area around them. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I'd say I'd say in, instead of the one unique thing from Thirteenth Age, this is akin to some of to some of the lesser knickknack type of ciphers that you could find in Numenera. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything mechanically, but they do. But they're weird in their own right. I like. I read two. I, 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 there are two more that I found that I actually really like. A drinking glass with a smiling face on the front, once per day at exactly five in the afternoon. It fills up randomly with either water or wine. Roll a D2. <laughs> five in the afternoon where? Because it's always five somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is a lock of red hair tied in a black ribbon that changes color when any other character holds it. It changes to the holder's hair color, switching back once left go. If held by a prototype, the holder heals, hears a piercing scream. I love that. These are so funny. Mm -hmm. And lastly, item creation. The starting equipment in this section may not always pique your interest. Or you may have a weapon idea in mind that isn't listed. In this case, one easy way to make an item is to take the stats of another weapon and reflavor the weapon to your idea. Another simple option is looking over spells and transforming them into items. Under normal circumstances, I'm not the biggest fan of res of reskinning existing items to fill up holes. This is an exception. Largely because yeah. you you're already crossing over magic with technology anyways. But also because of the variety of stuff that can be done here. Mhm. Mm And it's also a good way to get to um, to give the GM ideas for for ver for whatever whatever crazy whatever crazy item use they have they happen to have up their sleeve. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm reading more of these role playing bubbles, and they're just funny. Mm -hmm. Now. I had thought I had thought about doing um 
Well, let me, let me ask you this: Should we do vehicles down the road in this in this series, or do you think we, or should we not? Um, we at least need to cover the vehicle rules. Um, and that's going to be basically most of the chapter. So. I think we should do vehicles next. Yeah, I'd s I. So that the, that means that that effectively means that vehicles are going to be the penult are going to be actually not the penultimate because we still have the grab bag after we a, after after we do the ones that I already have listed. Mm hmm. So but, we're close to the end, but we're not done yet. Yeah, vehicles have. There's quite a bit of mechanics here about vehicles, including having their own, like, vehicles having their own expertises and such, mm -hmm. and their own sets of augments, items, etc. So, it it really does need to be explored. Which, to that, to that end, fair point. So, we will be handling vehicles next. I know this one was a bit was a bit dry when it came to listing off some of the stuff, but again, there's not a whole lot to say when going through equipment lists. However, I vastly disagree with jo with John Wick saying that equip saying that equipment or weapon lists is, is something that needs to go. Yeah, after all, the other John Wick would say an equipment list is vital. He, he visited a sommelier for that reason. What are you talking about? He was just at, he was he just wanted a tasting. You know, sometimes all you say is you want a tasting and then you end up buying the bar. That happened to him too. <laughs> of course the sommelier that we created with Heavens and Heresies, well um you don't come you don't come to you don't go looking for him. He hap he just happens to find you. Indeed. But that will do it for this particular episode of Valley of the Judge. We will be back here next week, as as already mentioned, to cover the things that go vroom. And that and that should be oh, that should be certainly a bit a bit more of our interest because we'll be delving into some of the mechanics of vehicles, um, as well as the way to customize because this is probably going to cover both both ground vehicles and the bigger stuff. Yep, also covers mechs. And we lo we love ourselves some mechs. Have I told you guys about your Lord and Savior Super Robot Wars 30 now with the expansion pass for the final sets of DLC that includes such characters as Chiriko in his scope dog and uh well, Zengar and the Dizengar? Cuz if I haven't, it's fantastic. Get it. And and hell, right right on the chapter right on the chapter title for um for vehicles, we have mechs. <laughs> but this also means I'm gonna have to find an appropriate image for what for the grab bag. But I think I think I've got something in mind. All right. So until then, on behalf of the good brothers, present and not present. My name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>